executive producer, William O'Keefe, did that movie. That's uh, called um, a new name now, Black Gold. But uh, America is still the place, which is our outgoing theme. I'm in that movie. You're in that movie as a cab driver. I'm a cab driver. I'm and like, a, like a legitimate cab driver. Yes. In that uh -huh. movie. And you give the star some, uh, the lead role, some advice. I drove him around. Yes, you did. Uh huh. The, the we were not filming when that happened. <laughs> we're not filming, but we're here at the Marsh Theater with a live audience. And in our last segment. I'm Paul Wells, and of course, Will Durst and Willie Brown. Yes. And we take questions, so say who you are, where you're from, and state your question, please. Cool. Uh, hey, my name is Wes. I'm from here in town. Uh, I'm a tour guide. I started a company. We do kind of the people's history of San Francisco, and I think I might be the youngest person in here by a, a couple of decades. <laughs> um, you know, we I didn't I, card you. Say what? We didn't <laughs> card you. Um, so my question is, um, you know, being a young person who's obviously seeing all these changes that you're talking about, uh, I appreciate, you know, the sentiment that the city's always changing, but as someone who's seeing most of my friends leaving for greener pastures, what can we do as the artists um, who are still trying to create culture in San Francisco, and how do we keep the city alive? Yeah. No idea. <laughs> I'm just hanging out by the tips of my fingernails, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's getting harder and harder and harder. And you're right, more homogenized. It is. Know? There's only three percent of the city's black now, I think. Yeah. Not last I heard. A lot of a lot of uh, young young white people staring at their phones, mm. yeah. chasing Pokemon. <laughs> and that's part of what happens during the course of any change. I don't have one relative that's still living in San Francisco. They all move to Oakland. Uh, I'm the only one left here. And now they can't even afford Oakland. Well, not yet. Yeah, now it's Martinez. They'll get there. <laughs> Oakland will get there, though, the way the, the, way the numbers are going. Yeah. Sorry, man, you're I, on your I own. Think, I think a big part of it is electing uh, officials that will not bow to corporate greed and will uh, make stricter laws so that uh, you know, this thing won't happen again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, Stuart. Okay on the program. Thank Next you, question. Wes. Say who you are and where you're from. I'm Pat from Daly City. Thank you for offering to send all the people our way. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to send all the homeless I to Daly Coma. City. I meant Coma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a, f a friend who has an intriguing theory about Trump that he wants to be elected, but he does not want to serve because it would require too much sacrifice of his business opportunities and it'd be uh, too much work for him that he's not obviously temperamentally suited for. So what he will do is get elected and resign and let his vice president be president, who of course will give him many, many perks in all of his business deals because he will be selected for that, uh, okay. for that position. Uh Interesting theory. Is there a question in all that? Yes. What okay. does anyone think of that? I, I thought. <laughs> I love that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you that I, I believe that when Trump announced last June, that he had no idea that he might win. It was strictly a brand hustle, which is you know always been typical of what Trump usually does, and it was a reality experience for him to. <laughs> come face to face with the possibility that he might win. And, and in that regard, he knew that he could vanquish those 16 um, <laughs> rather challenged individuals that were uh, challenged in multiple ways. It was just and, a different race yeah, this and he, time. Yeah, he knew exactly, exactly. And he was selling, you know, it was like selling Oxidol. And most of you don't even know what that is. Uh, but in the Second World War, that was rationed. Uh, you know they rationed? Yeah. Russian powder? Yeah, Oxidol. Oxidol was one of probably the worst pollutants ever, but, but, but it was pretty tough. A detergent? Yeah, it was a yeah. detergent, really, and it had all the bad stuff in it. Um, and so it was made of readily available to those of us <laughs> in many <laughs> <laughs> It was part of the deal. So Trump didn't win. And so I think that Trump uh, is terrified mm. that uh, he may have to uh, become the president to win this thing. Your idea. Uh, you know, you might call him and tell him. 
<laughs> Celebrity of presidency. Vote for Hillary, please. Well, I, I just think that means it's all the more important who he picks as vice president. He was looking at Adolf Eichmann, but it was too late. <laughs> I thought it was Saddam Hussein. Oh, all right. <laughs> the liar versus the asshole. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's bad or worse. Mm -hmm. So go for bad. <laughs> Vote for bad. That should be her new slogan. Vote for bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bad or worse. <laughs> Vote for bad. So next question, please. Yeah, Rich Lang from The Hate. The former Republican governor of Virginia was indicted and convicted for taking money and gifts from people who were doing business with the state. The Washington Post says Tim Kaine did the same thing as governor. Do you think that Hillary should risk running with him? Hmm. Yeah, but uh, McConnell's uh, case got thrown out by the Supreme Court, didn't it? So I think he's, yeah, I think he's okay. I also think that's why he released that so early so that there wouldn't be, you know, a surprise later on. I'm wondering, so yeah, I, I, Tim Kaine is a possibility, but I'm wondering what the Hillary people are holding on to for Trump after the general starts. Well, I love her mm -hmm. references that every book he's ever written <laughs> has ended in chapter 11. 11. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, he bankrupted three casinos. And I what love his explanation. He said, but I didn't lose any money. It was those people who invested in the idea, and it didn't work. And I got out when I realized it wasn't going to work. They got out late. And it's their problem. That they, you you know, mean like voters? <laughs> he, he thinks it's be like the country will be. That's right. He <laughs> thinks apparently the, America, the debt that the United States have can be handled the same way. He figures that all we got to do is get out early enough, and you know, Great Britain will be stuck with it. <laughs> France will be stuck with it. Obviously, Greece won't because they've already. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite was after but Brexit. But is next, you know. Yeah. <laughs> after yeah. Brexit, he, for one thing, he got it wrong. He said we're here, here in Scotland, where they voted to take their country back, and no, actually, Scotland voted 60-40 to remain. And then he said, the fall of the pound will be good because more people will be able to afford to come to my golf courses. <laughs> well, my favorite is what the Scottish people took to Twitter and they made up the most incredible <laughs> words to describe him. I don't even know if I can say some of them right now. You can't. Okay. <laughs> Put it on your website. All right. <laughs> uh, did, did you see the Samantha B show? Uh -uh. Where she had the actual she uh, she read some of the tweets, mm -hmm. but she said it wouldn't sound right unless you had a real Scotsman do it. So they got uh, the David Tennant guy who used to be uh, Doctor Who. Right. They got him to do it, and so he read them, and it was just wonderful. It was gobsmocking, you know, and mm -hmm. and all sorts. Of, and he read it in yeah. uh, in with a Scottish accent. They call him Cheeto fingers. <laughs> what? Little Should Cheeto we? fingers. That's, I love that. I have yeah. a question until someone else comes up to the microphone. But what should we expect Monday at the Republican National Convention since it's going to be Trump's show, basically? A lot of racist stuff. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> no, exactly the opposite. Because what they do at the Republican conventions is they always have the convention and they have. It, it's almost like a minstrel show. There are so many minorities there. You're just going, where the hell? But if you look close. They, they're working. It's, it's one. <laughs> no, but if you look in the audience, there's one black guy in the audience and they dress him up in different costumes and put him in different places of the audience and film him from different angles. And yeah. The guy has a, uh, the guy has a card. It's a gig. Yeah, yeah. That's right. A gig yeah. is a gig. Don't you recall at the last time Trump Somebody talked about Trump and his oh, yeah. inability, and he pointed to the guy up there, and he said, there, there's my black guy. He's right up there. <laughs> Interviewed the black guy afterwards. God, I don't know what to tell you. He's talking about I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> there's my African-American. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. It's a job. Thank you very much. What I'd like to do is get some pranksters in there to take all the, um, the men and women signs off the bathrooms so that they'll be so confused with these gender-neutral bathrooms. Everybody would have to hold their pee the whole time. And then they explode. Yeah. I wonder what celebrities he's going to get. Is he, he, so far, none. It's amazing. Uh, he is really, he can't even get athletes. 
you know, and there are a lot of those that are kind of messed up in the head. He can't. <laughs> He's got Stacy Dash. He, he can't get. He can't even get there. It's amazing. Nobody wishes to be booked at a Trump gig. It's amazing how Omarosa is on his staff. Yeah. Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Yeah. Well, I mean. Gary Busey. Yeah. And Gillette. <laughs> really? Well, Dennis Rodman loves dictators, so they have something. In <laughs> well, Rodman says unless, unless he gets his money before. He's Very hard for Don Blue yeah, yeah. to look short <laughs> going across the front. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, Don, ladies Don, Don, Don Blue. Blue in the house. One of my oh, yeah. inspirations on the radio. Willie's got to run. I can see it. Yeah, uh, quick, up there. quick question. Uh, <laughs> you know, as you said, uh, Donald Trump uh, at some point is going, oh my God, I could end up being president. Um, we still don't envision what that is. Can you give me a quick Donald Trump, the new president, here's what happens. You uh, me and him. I'm asking you, Willie, oh, Willie Brown, oh, oh, oh. former, oh, former oh, oh, oh. mayor of San Francisco. Ask Stewart, and certainly not me. He is going to announce that he will not live in public housing. <laughs> he will not fly on Air Force One. <laughs> he will only use his own airplane. And he will show up only when he wishes to show up and under whatever circumstances. And there will be no state of the union, period. And that the Supreme Court justice's resignation will be accepted so he can appoint his own crew. Wow. Yeah. So we're Venezuela. Yeah. yeah, that's what, yeah. So to speak. The dollar will drop Im immediately. The dollar will just plummet that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go short. <laughs> go short on bucks. It's going to be interesting to see what the Democrats will then follow up with the following Monday and exactly how much Donald Trump will speak and what he will say. Well, it's a good thing for Democrats to be following the Republicans because we'll be able to counter uh, almost every assertion that they make that is inconsistent with facts. And that you know, facts don't matter. Well, you'll you'll have Paul Ryan doing his number if he shows up. You'll have. Oh, by the way, where's McConnell? Has anybody seen him lately? Mitch McConnell. Him lately? Yeah. Mitch McConnell has disappeared. He literally has disappeared. You'll. I, I tell you, will be there though. What's that former governor of Texas, Perry? Yeah. <laughs> he will be there because uh, he can't get an audience of two. No, poor baby. <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> he's going to show up <laughs> just for the opportunity. He can't pass it up. Uh, Mike period. Huckleby will be there, the former governor of Arkansas. Somebody's got to say He started a, a Men's Lives Matter <laughs> campaign. Men's Lives Matter? <laughs> I kid you not. Wow. Even if these guys got it, they wouldn't get it. <laughs> yeah, they don't even understand. <laughs> Ma'am. Oh, I have a question. What dirt do you think they're going to dig up on Hillary next? Dirt. There's no dirt left. Yeah. Are you sure? Seriously, I mean, yeah, all the meat the is off the scandal bone. No, there's uh -huh. a couple things I think uh, that you're not seeing. Remember what they 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 said about her when she was a first lady? Benghazi. That she's gay. Liar, thief, lesbian, oh. murdered Vince Foster. That's when she was first lady. Aren't first ladies supposed to be off limits for crazy? They they hate her so much. If they've had anything, they just like throwing stuff up against the wall and see what sticks. They don't even care if it sticks. They just like throwing stuff next to her. You won't I, see that with Melania. I thought that I, I had heard from a, a person that worked in the White House before that Vince Foster's wife was Hillary's lover. <laughs> and that that was going to come out and that's why she killed herself. Sounds like the National Enquirer right now. <laughs> I think that would be an interesting way to go. You, you know, I haven't heard that one. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> and I'm in on the no. That's a conspiracy theory <laughs> under a conspiracy theory <laughs> under conspiracy theory. Thank you. Thank or the you. truth be told. We'll see. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, she's been blamed for everything. You know, Benghazi, the Challenger space shuttle explosion, <laughs> sinking of the Lusitania, Brexit, and, and season Herbal. two of True Detective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some people think she has something to do with the Titanic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although that was 1912. 
That, that's why they think she has something to do with it. In a past life. <laughs> well, on that note, I think we've past come lives to the note? end of our show. <laughs> well, we should thank this lovely audience for wandering down. Here at the Marsh Theater, visit them at marsh.org. Let me give you some credits. The Will and Willie Show is a production of Flow Communications. Special thanks to the Marsh Theater, our AV crew, Ace and Hugh of realitycheckTV.com. Guest broke ass Stuart Shuffman. Let's hear it for him. And especially our executive producer, William O'Keefe. And to Tiger Lynn with one N and TigerLynn.com for her music from the CD Soul Fire. Thank you all for being here. And you can get us on the internet at Will and Willie. Dot com. And we're going to do this once a month. We're going to do this once a month until the November election. All right. I got to go with you again. Yeah. All right. America sure. is still the place. The gateway to freedom for the human race. America is still the place. Yeah.